What's up, man? That was a very close, very high level technical fight. I'm curious what the thoughts were. Were you in there during it? And when you got to the judges' scorecards, how confident you were? Uh, not super confident, but I thought I did enough in the first two, especially at the end of each round, to, to get it done. Um, I think just on what you said there about it being a chess match, I was open about the fact that Jamal was going to be the best guy I'd ever fought. And I prepared like that, and, and then I fought like that. I gave him his respect, and, and he gave me mine, and I felt like I just did a little bit more damage, and that was the, that was the way the fight panned out. He's an interesting opponent, right? Because it's almost like he changes his style a little bit in between each round. So he came out the second round way more flowy and at range than the first round. How was it for you as an experience to try and adjust to his adjustments? Yeah, my biggest strength is my IQ. So to, as he moves differently, I move differently. And you would have seen that a little bit. You know, if I could be critical of myself, I think I need to put my hands and my feet together a bit more instead of just being kicking or just being punching. Because when I'm in the gym and I do both of those things really well, that's when I'm really dangerous. So in my next fight, that, that's probably what my big takeaway from this one is going to be, is going in and making sure that I'm doing kicks and, and hands in together and changing my levels at the same time. In terms of damage... We'll get to yours in a second. Did anything he land hurt you a lot? He landed a couple of really crisp one-twos, but no? Nah, he landed one big right hook, kind of. Maybe it was a left hook that came straight down the pipe, um, which was a really good shot. But I hit him with a really nice check hook right at the start of the third round where he, he took a big step in and threw that right hand and I kind of stepped off and cracked him with the check hook. And he stopped for a second. He looked at me and said, that was a good shot. And I was like, all right, respect, thanks. I think most of your damage and success was the leg kicks, though, right? You, yeah. You were firing your right one particularly hard, as hard as you could. Yeah. That, that had him spinning around. Is that one of your strengths? And you knew against a long guy like him? Probably. Yeah. I told Dom Cruz before the fight, I said, I think he's going to prepare for that. So what I'm going to do is throw my left kick to the body to square him back up into that kick. And you would have seen that work. So as I landed the left switch kicks to the body, it forced him to adjust to that. And then I could go back to the calf, which, which was what I did. I particularly enjoyed in the first round, there's a nut shot. And then he came out with like some mad flying kick at you and then at the very end of the round you sort of just got him with a head kick that slapped him and you both sort of looked at each other and smiled and yeah like there's especially a guy like Jamal like fuck what hasn't he done in this sport beat Corey Sandhagen beat Alex Hernandez he's had five fights in the UFC what am I like we respect out there we're putting on a show I think the crowd love that fight so um, that's it I think it would seem logical that September Sydney is one for you? Is that where you'd like to fight next? Yeah, I told, in the lead up, I don't look an hour past the fight. Literally, I didn't, I'm booked on a flight to go home tomorrow. I've got to beg the UFC travel people to let me change that because um, I want to stay and go watch Jimmy and Jack and Alex in um, Perth. I mean, in Vegas. Um, but I want to fight Nate Landhewer, Nate the Train in Sydney. He just briefly missed out on a top 15 spot against Dan Ige, who I don't think is a top 15 guy. I think Dan Ige is a top five guy. And he just got edged out in a decision there. Nate the Train, come down to Sydney. We'll open the main card or close the prelims. Winner gets spot number 15 in the rankings. That's, you know, if, if Sean agrees with that, I can't see why we wouldn't do that. It's a banger. I like it. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you expect him to have that level of activity given that, you know, he did have some struggles to make, uh, you know, the weight? I don't think he struggled to make the weight, to be honest. He just, I think he just misinterpreted what our rules were because they changed it from a two-hour weigh-in to a one-hour weigh-in. Like, he was, he was late, but when they told him he was late, he was sprinting to the scales. Like, he wasn't out of shape. I wasn't, there was no point where I thought, oh, that weight cut took it out of him. I'm, I'm going to go here. I don't think he's a massive 45er. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking like that. And uh, just real quick, uh, what's your prediction on um, on uh, Rodriguez versus Volkanovski? Uh, I think it's going to be a shutout for Volk. Yeah. Volk's got to watch the left kick. Um, it's a really hard kick to emulate because if you get kickboxers, they do it a little bit differently, and especially Thai guys do it differently. Yair does it in a very MMA-specific way, how he controls the distance. But Alex has never, never come up against the style that he hasn't been able to figure out, so I'm going to back him all the way. Thank you. Thank you. And your prediction for Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> ah, fuck. What a joke. <laughs> everybody, every, everybody wants to be fighters. You've got YouTubers want to be fighters, ex-baseball, ex-basketballers wants to be fighters. Everybody wants to be the fighters, but we're the one out here who fucking put in the work to get here and actually earn our coin doing it.